y'all. Jeff from TerraTrike here, also known as Chonk. Um, I was just going to explain a little bit more. I've seen some things on uh, Brawl and Recumbent Journal about um, the Zoomers and the Cruisers and how we've uh, apparently discontinued them. And I just wanted to explain a little bit more what we're doing here. Um, there will be a press release coming out very shortly explaining it. But what we've tried to do is trying to consolidate our line. Um, over the last 15 years, our line has grown from having uh, two different models to over 15 different models. And a lot of that is just because of uh, the growth and putting out different models every year. And so what we've done is we've tried to rope those back in and make it a little less confusing for the average consumer. Um, our PATH model, our Cruiser model, and our Tour model were essentially the exact same model. The only difference was, was uh, componentry and specs. And so what we've done, and I haven't announced this yet, but like I said, I will be shortly, we're going to be bringing those in and calling that now the Tour 2. And um, it'll be available in four different component levels. So the PATH will still be around. It just won't be called the PATH anymore. It will be called the Tour 2 uh, external 8-speed. The Cruiser will be, still be called, will be called the Tour 2 also, but will be the base model. And the Tour as it is now will be called the Tour 2 of the Elite model. We'll also be putting out a kind of a high-end uh, pro tour also that will have 27 speeds and some high-end components too. So the path, the cruiser, and the tours you know and now are not going away. They're just changing one name for that. The sport and the zoomer line are also being uh, kind of uh, uh, melded together into one, and we're calling that the Sportster. And again, same thing. It'll be available in four different component levels. So zoomer's going away in name only. It'll now be called the Sportster. The advantage is, is now instead of having 15 different models, we basically have four different models. We have our Rover, our Rambler, our Tour, and our Sportster, and each one of those will be available in four different component groups. On top of that, then we have our two tandems also. So a little bit easier to comprehend, hopefully a little bit easier for the consumers to digest. I'm standing in the HP Velotechnic booth for no particular reason other than the fact that this is the ghost booth of Recumbent CycleCon. In this booth we have a Street Machine GTE, we have the non-folding Gecko, and over here we have a blisteringly red Speed Machine. However, this booth has gone completely unmanned the entire show, so I wanted to come by and show it a little bit of love so that, uh, well, so that it doesn't feel lonely. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and check out the Gecko non-folding FX, what I like to call it just the NFX, for a little bit, maybe take some photos, but here, oh, good bike, yes, people love you, people love you, oh, good Gecko, good Gecko, okay, that's enough silliness for now, back to some other footage. Hey, uh, I'm Joe Copeland. I'm actually the executive director for National Ambux. Ambux is a charity. Um, you might ask why we're at the recumbent cycle con. Um, Ambux is mission is mobility and independence. How do we affect fitness for folks with disabilities? So what happened was Ambux started uh, their own tricycle company. It's called Amtrike LLC. That's our brand, uh, and we started out in therapeutic tricycles. Uh, just to give you an example, um, this is one of our basic bikes. Uh, it's not really a recumbent, but, uh, but it's a bit different. The rider's seated like in a chair position. Uh, because we work in the rehabilitation market and in the school systems, the bike's very, very adaptable and can quickly be changed for sizes. It has a wheelchair loading lock, so the bike's stationary when we're transferring a rider with special needs on and off. Uh, the steering can be locked straight ahead or limited to a 20 degree turn. The telescoping handlebars 
can be pulled out of the way to transfer a rider on and off. You can quickly add and subtract parts. The laterals come right off, they're very adjustable. The seat back goes up and down. This red sliding seat post has a couple of levers underneath and I can slide it all the way from the front of the trike to the back. The seat goes up and down so I can quickly adapt for a, a wide range of size of rider. This bike um, is actually uh, one of our newest models, uh, a new feature, in that it's rear steering and control. So a more involved rider can still ride in, in a controlled fashion. The parent or the caregiver can control and steer. A lot of riders can ride and have fun and do well and uh, just need to be safeguarded. Uh, it may be a cognition, it may be one of their disabilities, it might be visual sight impairments, whatever. Um, but that's a really popular solution for that type of rider. My name is Dan Herbig and I'm president and co-creator of the uh, Ultimate Tandem. Um, basically the concept that we came up with was on a traditional tandem the rear rider has an obstructed view of the road so we wanted to create an unobstructed view of the road. Uh, by elevating the rear rider the stoker could um, sit up and view the road whether it's a kid or a wife or couples or, or whoever may be on the, the stoker position along with the captain in a recumbent style more comfortable seating. Um, the bike is fully er ergonomically adjustable for a 5 foot to a 6 5 person with quick release slides on the bottom so that the front seat can slide back and forth. The handle handlebars have six adjustment points um, along with, with height and tilt. Uh, the rear handlebars have adjustment by leaning and telescoping up and down and the rear seat also has adjustment up and down. Uh, a backrest on the back for a person if they want to sit back and enjoy the ride. Um, and one of the major selling points of the bicycle is everything is on, uh, is on quick releases so that the bike can be adjusted uh, quickly and, and comfortably. The, the, the big point that we came up with, because it's a 90 inch wheelbase, we wanted to have the, bolt, the bike to be able to fold, which right here these class brake and the bike can fold for transport or storage. Um, the price point we set, since it's a recreational bike, is uh, $1,500 retail. Um, we're looking to uh, meet families and, and people who want to ride, ride bikes who aren't necessarily looking to break the world speed record, but uh, want to get out and have some fun. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the bike, and if you can, visit the website, ultimatandem.com. And uh, we're having a lot of fun here. At Hi, I'm uh, Brad with EcoSpeed from Portland, Oregon, and uh, we build electric assist systems for recumbents. Um, we do recumbent specific, trike specific, and also cargo bikes and uprights. Today we got the Lightfoot Rambler E, which is uh, Lightfoot brand's uh, electric bike model, and it's, we're using a mid-drive that we create that fits uh, specifically to this bike, and you can see it works right now. So what makes this system different from a, a hub motor is that by putting it in the middle of the chain line, when, when the rider is pedaling, the bike's rolling and uh, it's, it's just like riding a normal bike. The motor is actually not engaged, there's a roller clutch in here, so, so while you're spinning the bike, 
is is much like riding a normal bike. You're not fighting the centrifugal force of having a rotating mass in your wheel. When you hit the power, I'm gonna hit the power now. The power works together with the rider, but it doesn't force the pedals to move around, uh, which uh, you know could knock your feet off the pedals. So it's not just about that's how it works. The real big deal is that when when you're running the chain in the middle, you get to use all the gears in the back. So when I switch gears, each gear I go into has the, the motor power. And that translates into being able to climb a really steep hill and still have power and be in your, in your smooth power band. But also when you get to the top of the hill and you want to cruise at a good cruising speed, you can shift down and, and uh, I mean shift up. And, and, and have good performance at that speed as well. So we have a, a good range between climbing and, and commuting fast. Um, top speed, well it's not about top speed, but you can get over 30, that's, that's easy. Uh, but what it's about is that you have power to get off the stop sign, to get through the intersection, uh, to get started and get your momentum going, uh, even when you're carrying a load or having a heavy bike. Um, and going up hills, you know, hills, uh, hills are kind of tough to keep your momentum up with, but when you add this, you just zoom right up. Um, so, yeah, this is our EcoSpeed Lightfoot Rambler. Mm -hmm.